Hello everyone, my name is Holly and today I'll be sharing with you some awesome new fantasy and one sci-fi, but mostly fantasy, that I highly recommend that you should add to your TBR today. Actually, most of these books I read in February and they need to be put on your radar if they are not already. They probably are. In fact, most of you have probably read a lot of these, but I still really want to talk about them as I haven't um, done a whole lot of reviews on this channel recently, so now I can film a video of just like an abundance of recommendations. And I'm really excited about that. But before we get into the stack, I want to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network with licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. And to get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. And that way, BetterHelp can like match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable whether it's through a chat that's definitely going to be me <laughs> or a phone call or a video call you can message your therapist at any time and even schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you and if your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason whatsoever no questions asked you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge so with better help you get the same quality you would expect from an in-office therapy but with a therapist who is custom picked for you there's more schedule scheduling, flexibility, and at a more affordable price. Right now, you can get 10% off your first month by going to www.betterhelp.com backslash hollyheartsbooks. Or you can find my special URL linked in the description box below. Thank you, BetterHelp, for working with me today. All right, so moving on to the very first book that I read recently, and that was The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi. This was one of my most anticipated books, as I'm sure it was a lot of your guys' as well. And I came out of it really surprised surprised with a certain comparison for another book and that is kings of the wild um this gave me major king of the wild vibes which is one of my all-time favorite books so this is the story of a woman who is probably in her like 30s or 40s and she used to be a legendary pirate captain and something really bad happened to her so she put her piracy ways behind her she's even given her ship into the care of someone else who is a trusted confidant. And she's living in hiding with her daughter, mother, and her brother. And because they are in hiding, they are struggling for money. Um, but one day, a woman who was the mother of a former crewmate offers them an unbelievable amount of money to find her missing granddaughter who she believes was kidnapped. And if Amina is like somehow able to find her whereabouts, she gets paid. Or if she gets her back safely, she's offered this like huge treasure trove pretty much. So as a reader, the whole time you're reading, you're just like rooting for these characters because this money would guarantee them stability and comfort for not only Amina, but also her family, um, generations to come. And you know, it's like also the promise of one last grand adventure. So she has to like get her old crew back together and go on this quest. So that's like the little, little tease for the plot. And I had a really fun time with this one. This is my first book by this author. I never picked up City of Brass. Um, no matter how many times I said I was going to read it, um, I never got to it. It still sits on my shelf unread, but this gave me an idea on what to expect. And I am really impressed. I love the writing, the way the characters were written, and even the dialogue. Um, it was so fluid and easy. The story itself was really fun. It definitely had its like slower moments, but I know to appreciate that sort of stuff as a fantasy reader. I love build up. In fact, that's typically why I enjoy the first book the most out of an entire series. And the way Shakaborty wrote atmosphere here really set the scenes with like such a light hand and nothing ever felt heavy like some adult fantasies can i could picture things so vividly and the setting came to life perfectly i gave this five out of five stars and i highly recommend if you, if you are new to this author or you love this author already and just haven't picked this up yet then for you i definitely recommend next up i have the unbroken i finally read this after staring at it for a year but i was motivated to pick it up because the sequel comes out this month which i plan to read if i haven't already um when this video goes live this is a fantasy series called the magic of the lost and we follow two characters one is technically heir to the throne of this like colonial empire and the other is 
someone who has been taken from one of the colonies as a child to be trained as a soldier for the Empire. But for this character, at the very beginning, she is sent home with a bunch of others to basically beat down a rebellion. So she's starting to have to deal with like split loyalties and all that drama and intrigue. It is a high fantasy and that's exactly what I signed up for. It's exactly what I got. It is very brutal. So I'd include some like dark fantasy in the mix with that as well. Um, this is one of those books where if the beginning doesn't quite reel you in, I recommend sticking with it and getting to some of the juices because I was the same. I was a little wishy-washy at first, but it started to pick up for me um, actually toward the middle, which is actually a really long time. Typically, I will DNF a book pretty quickly, but um, I felt like the the hope in this one. And I ended up really, really enjoying it to where I am now excited to read the sequel for all of the <laughs> black lesbians, the political intrigue, backstabbing, and... I still don't know which side that I want to go with, even though the answer seems obvious, but I'm like super skeptical. And if you've read this book, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And Terrain, the beautiful person on the cover, one of the main characters is someone I love, but I also want to like punch in the face. <laughs> she leads with her heart and emotion, but is written in a way that I can like be okay with that. And then you have two sides of the same coin. There's Luca, the princess who leads with her head. I think if you are a big fantasy reader, you should have this in your collection. I gave it four out of five stars. Next up is another newer release, and that is The Magician's Daughter. This book is like, okay, if you have like Howl's Moving Castle and a little princess and they had a baby, so you can kind of like get an idea on what type of feeling the story throws off. It's about a young girl who has been living on a mythical island off the coast of Ireland all of her life. Her only friends are a mage named Rowan and his familiar who can transform into a human. And for all of her life, this is all she has known until one day Rowan tells her that the magic in the world has pretty much died and he needs her help to confront the council who hoards magic for themselves those damn greedy bastards <laughs> and she has a little special bit of magic in her heart and rowan needs it to lure out the council and get some answers um so she journeys off the island for the first time and heads to london it's like a fish out of water story but i found it to be like a great palate cleanser and refreshing and very magical whimsical i did enjoy the first half more than i did the second which makes sense as i'm not like the biggest fan of magical realism but overall i'm very happy to have experienced the story it's slower paced for sure but it's written very very well. I've always wanted to read from this author as I've only heard great things and now I know what to expect from her um, from her other books. I gave this four out of five stars. It's a great book to cozy up to. Oh man, this next book is a very exciting one that I finally um, got to read and that was The Tyranny of Faith. The Justice of Kings, um, the first book, was my favorite book last year. Now a year later, the sequel is out and Orbit sent me this beautiful copy and as soon as I ripped the package open I started reading it and oh it gave me all of those five star feelings that the first one gave me and bonus it's over 150 pages longer which made me super happy this isn't a negative by any means but that was like one flaw in the justice of kings is that i wanted more now since this is a sequel i'm not going to go into much detail but we do have sir conrad von vault who is part detective part judge and part executioner and he's called back to the capital he finds the city gripped in political turmoil now he must rescue you the emperor's kidnapped grandson it takes like the upheaval of the first book to like an epic scale uprising the series is like an amazing blend of mystery politics and fantasy i should specifically say murder mystery and we meet new friends and learn more about our familiar gang and our heroes go through a lot as the villain it it, it seems like the villain is always one step ahead and man, that makes you nervous. Um, Swan continues to reveal new horrors that I think any like horror reader is going to love. And I can tell like Swan had a really fun time writing those scenes. I highly recommend you don't miss out on this. It's like the hot trendy fantasy to read right now and well worth it. Five out of five stars easily and finally um i have a sci-fi here and that is the scourge between stars this is the most recent book that i finished and though it's not out yet it's actually the only book on this list that isn't out it releases in april i really wanted to bring it to your attention i had pretty high expectations for it as someone who loves the dead space video game series the story here sounded 
very familiar. It's also like easily comparable to the Alien franchise. It's a sci-fi novella and it was great. It's about the last humans of a failed colony who are heading back to Earth. And the ship they are on is in really bad shape and it might not make it there. So you already have that like intensity of that. And then there's a murder. And then another. And then another. <laughs> and they get a warning from another ship to not open the door. It's a very fast-paced story that makes you want to keep turning the pages even with the length. As always, I think this would have benefited a lot if it was a full-length novel. I feel that way about every novella though. <laughs> um, you are on the edge of your seat just like the crew you're reading about. There are great action scenes. This is Ness Brown's debut novel, I believe, and I can't wait to read more from them. This comes out um, April 4th, I believe. I don't think the arc has a specific date on it. It just says April, but I think it's the 4th. I gave this 4 out of 5 stars, and I really enjoyed it. It's adult, by the way, not YA. Thought I would mention that. So that is it for this little recommendation for you of some brand new SFF books that I have really enjoyed recently. Tell me down below if you're going to pick any of these up. Are there any new books you've read recently that should be on my write over because I would love to know. Be sure to check out that BetterHelp offer. Everything you need to know will be linked down below in the description box for you. Thank you so much for watching and until we meet again, happy reading.